it seems like it's just a sign of the times in that um, perhaps if Oppenheimer had been released in a, a different year when there was um, stronger competition, it might not have fared so well. But it just seems like uh, that was that was really what it was up against. You know, it was uh, it was a sign of the the low quality, the low bar that Hollywood had set for itself last year. That Oppenheimer really was the best of the bunch. Yeah, it probably was a bit too long and um, possibly a bit too self indulgent in places. But it was not a great year for movies, and so I think um, the Oscars this year it's probably an example of playing it safe and picking the logical choice because it was pretty much the best that we got. It's really no surprise that the critical drinker is as popular as he is. Most often, hyper-successful people take a look at a situation and look to provide a solution, and the drinker is no different. He saw a situation in Hollywood that needed course correcting, and he went on a massive quest to get it done. But how was the critical drinker able to pressure Disney into making massive changes? How was he able to make such bulletproof arguments against the MCU? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive deep into the quagmire that is modern Hollywood. Will Jordan, better known as the Critical Drinker, began his career as an actor but quickly moved on to writing. He's written an entire spy series around a spy named Ryan Drake, which he's now looking to pitch to major movie studios. He's had a YouTube channel for a long time, but it wasn't until 2019 that his channel really started gaining traction. He correctly identified a trend starting with the original Captain Marvel film, which set the internet on fire. And with flop after monstrous flop, people would much rather watch the Critical Drinkers videos than actually see the films for themselves. Because why risk your cash on something that's probably garbage? And now news has dropped that Disney are in full-on panic mode and have canceled a whole bunch of MCU films and completely retooling going forward. And I think it's obvious that the powers that be in Hollywood have told the industry to tone down the progressive DEI woke stuff. The Oscars this year just seemed totally subdued. The entire presentation and jokes were bland, meant to offend as few people as possible. It was an overcorrection to say the least. But how big is the critical drinker's influence really? I mean, fans could make up their own minds, but now they're tending to agree with all of his arguments. And now it seems that Hollywood and Disney are finally listening to the critical drinker. The market has humbled Hollywood from a monetary perspective, as markets most often do. And when you're humbled, you stop thinking you're better than everyone else. For far too long, Hollywood and Disney thought they were smarter than their audience. For example, Marvel has gone down a very stupid path thinking they knew better than their audience. They thought that they could passively shove crap down everyone's collective throats. They've tried to force audiences into liking certain characters, Captain Marvel being the prime example. They would do all of this without developing a story nor writing these characters well. The worst part, though, was what they did to the fans. When fans didn't do what Marvel expected, i.e. watch their woke garbage, they would attack the fans. You see, it's the racist, bigoted fans that ruin everything. Because taking personal responsibility for your failures is racist now. Yeah, great logic. And the critical drinker was there all along, calling them out on all of this and in the process, amassing millions of views and subscribers. The drinker made them feel like they weren't alone in their mutual distaste of these garbage movies and TV shows. When so many people are in agreement about one thing, well, the facts just speak for themselves. So now Disney eventually had to wake up and realize they weren't smarter than their audience, and now they have to actually put in the work into crafting great stories with excellent character development. It was really easy to do a lazy race or gender swap of an existing IP, but creating something new is damn hard. Believe me, I know. When I came up with the idea for my novel, it took ages to craft the story, get to know the characters, see what makes them tick. Writing is not easy. Taking the lazy way out by copying something that came before is what Disney did, and they failed miserably at it. Another way the critical drinker changed Hollywood was disproving the toxic fan argument. When Disney and every major Hollywood studio went out and attacked the fans for not liking their movies, Will Jordan came out and carefully and methodically laid out the argument point by point. It all boiled down to story and character development. Two concepts I harp on all the time on my channel. Along with the drinker, 
Other channels rose up arguing similar points. Channels like my very own Off the Cover, Nerd Rotic, Geeks and Gamers, Hardcut Reviews, and Jesse Grant all grew from their shared sense of community that we are not alone in our opinions. Because audiences want good stories. As Oppenheimer and Top Gun Maverick have proven, audiences will get their asses into theater seats if the movie is good and if the producers respect their audience. I've actually mentioned in several of my reviews, starting with one of my earliest videos actually on Top Gun Maverick, that audiences appreciate when the filmmaker respects them. When Tom Cruise came out before the movie and thanked audiences for seeing his movie, that really meant a lot. Other directors followed suit. We got messages of gratitude and respect from the likes of Martin Scorsese ahead of Killers of the Flower Moon, and even Seth Rogen ahead of his animated feature Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This is all that audiences really wanted. A little gratitude and a little humility. I guess it took one wily Scottish YouTuber to finally elicit that out of Hollywood. And the final way that Will Jordan had a massive effect on Hollywood is that through his constructive criticisms, the industry will change for the better. I do genuinely think the MCU will improve because of all this. Already a big pause in 2024 is signaling that. Because of YouTubers like me, The Critical Drinker, Nerd Rotic, Jesse Grant, Since Corner, and Hard Cut Reviews, Disney has lost billions. Well, it's not really because of us. We told them if they continued down this dangerous woke path, they would lose out on a lot of money. Because you have to not only know your audience, but you also have to listen to them, which they didn't do and they paid dearly for it. So can one man make a difference? Certainly, at the very least, Will Jordan as a critical drinker did bring a whole community together. This community rose up, made their voices heard through their wallets, and now we might finally be emerging from the dark age of cinema. But what do you guys think of The Critical Drinker? Do you think he was a force for net change in Hollywood? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.